I have a second Creality Ender 3 Pro for a while now and I want to get rid of the stock things that are on the 3D printer. Let's uh, upgrade it with the Big 3 Tech Manta board, shall we? Coming up on Zachary's 3D Prints. Hey hello this is Zachary and welcome to this video. Today I'm going to install the Big 3 Tech Manta board onto my Creality and the 3 Pro. There is a stock board, 32 bit board, nothing wrong with it but I want to do a little bit more with my Creality and the 3 Pro. Why? Because there are some things that I want to do with this 3D printer and since my older, my first Creality and the 3 had already an SCR Mini E3 V three board installed. I want to use a brand new one to follow along with this instruction as well. So that you can see how it is to install a Big 3 Tech Manta board on a stock Creality Ender 3 Pro. With this kit that I got from Big 3 Tech to install on this 3D printer, I got also the CB1 extension board or expansion board. I don't know how it is called, but you know exactly which kind of board I'm talking about. There is also the possibility to put from Raspberry Pi an expansion board and that is called the CM4. And also 5 TMC2209 stepper drivers that you can press onto the board. There are some other little things that I came along during the installation, but I'm going to tell you all about it during the installation on the Creality Ender 3 Pro. To remove the cover, just unscrew the top screw above your controller board and then flip over the 3D printer. There you take out the remaining three screws. If that is done, you need to take a little picture for your own personal record or backup if something goes wrong and you want to switch back to your stock reality board that you always know where everything went to. Now that all wires and connectors are taken off the board, now the board is freely to remove, but first you need to take four screws out to remove the board from the bracket. As you might have guessed, this Manta board is a big board and it barely fits inside of the bracket. As mentioned, you can choose for it to take the bracket all away from the rest of the 3D printer. It's a choice that I will leave to you, but it makes the installation way easier. Also, the power wires, the DC in, but also the heat bed wire are going to be attached with a little angle, which makes it harder to read the ports properly. Those wires you are going to attach first and also take attention to the plus and minus sides from each connectors. For the heater cartridge for your nozzle or hot end, those are both red. So it doesn't really matter in which order that you are going to install them on the connector. Make sure that all wires are very tight connected and well screwed in. That if you pull on it, that it doesn't go loose. Because the last thing that you want is having a loose connection. Because loose wires in a connector means also catching fire. And that is something you don't want to have. Now you have six wires attached to all the connectors for the power to your heat pad, your DC in, your heater cartridge. There is also one left. It's called motor or motor power. That one you don't need to use. You have one connector or a wire, red and black, that you normally would attach to one of those connectors as well. That one is not going to be used. You want your continuously fan running for your hot end to cool down the filament before it is entering the heater block. That wire you need to strip and also put a GST connector to it with crimping tool. It took me a, a little while because it was a little bit rusty. I have crimped a lot of wires in the past, but since I wasn't doing it for a long time, it took me some tries. The wire is long enough also for you to try them out. You can find, you can find the crimping tool on AliExpress or some other sites online, but look for GST crimping tool. So once that is done, then put them in the right order so that one plus is at the plus side and minus is at the minus side. So once that is done, now it is time to connect all other things in the right order. You have a one row for only the end stops for the X, Y and Z end stop. Also make sure to connect the thermistor for the hot end, but also for the heat bed. Those are very close to the connectors for the power 
and the heat bed. The pinout you can also find on the website from Big Tree Tech where you can have full manual instruction. I will put the link in the description so that if you are going to install this board that you have a little point of reference where every wire and every connector goes from the printer to your Manta board. My Manta board came with the CB1 board from Big Tree Tech. There is also a heatsink and some screws that you are going to need to install the heatsink to the CB1 board. There is also a little tape, I call it tape, that you need to apply to the chips and then put the heatsink on top of it. The screws that you are going to need are M2 screws, not M3 screws. For some reason, I don't know if I got the screws with it or not. I had exactly four screws to use, but those were M3 screws, which didn't fit at all. So you need M2 screws to attach the heatsink to the board. So depending on if you are going to use the Raspberry Pi, the CM4 board, or you are going to use the CB1 board, the instructions are, you know, different for this video i'm going to use the cb1 board and also going to follow the instructions from page 22 as a guideline to get everything set up in the instructions from page 22 it says to download from the github website the image and use Belina etcher to flash this image directly on a micro sd card make sure it is a big enough sd card I use a 16 gigabyte card for, for flashing this on there. Once the flashing is done and the validating is also finished, then you need to reopen it and then you need to make a little change in order to use the Wi-Fi function into the notepad in a little file for the settings to change your Wi-Fi name and also putting your password in there. Once that is done, close the window and then also select save on exit now everything is done the sd card is going in the big tree tech board on the bottom side it's very confusing because this board has two sd card slots micro sd card slots that is from a normal standard stock board from creality this is the one you usually have but the big tree tech manta board has also one on the bottom and that one is going to give you some little trouble because it is very close to the side from the cover. I had to make a little cut in the cover because little disaster happened because I was all set, all done. I had to do a little wire change. I took the cover off and there I broke the micro SD card just a tiny bit enough to make sure that the card wasn't working anymore. I had to do the whole image thing again taking two hours to get everything up and running. So if you're going to install it, make sure to also make the letter cut in the cover, making sure that, that there is enough space for the micro SD card and the top screw that you are going to use in the end, you cannot use it because the SD card is in the way. So I was, I hope that Big Tree Tech is going to make some little changes to the Manta board because it's a very dumb place. It's very close to the side and you are going to break a micro SD card and also having a lot of problems. Um, so once everything is done and you are satisfied with this result, the micro SD card is going in the bottom slot from the uh, Manta board, once that is done, everything is going to be followed as in the instructions from the manual. Called clipper.bin, then change it into firmware.bin. This micro sd card is going into the right sd card slot on the front of the 3d printer then you are going to turn off the printer reboot it again and then the whole firmware is going to be flashed onto the board so that the cb1 board is going to communicate with the controller board once that is, is done the micro sd card you can take out of the 3d printer and then you can check if the firmware.bin is changed in firmware.cur. So that means that the firmware was successfully flashed onto the controller board.
So these are all my config file settings. I will show you, show you all of them so that you can also check which kind of settings you need to change, where you need to make some uh, little adjustments like a exclamation mark for the direction. Also, if you notice that your stepper motors are pretty loud and you have the TMC2209 stepper drivers, then uncomment all the that says TMC2209. Just a little remark, this 3D printer can be equipped or this board can be equipped with two extruders. Just use one extruder, not the second one. Also for the fans, if you are going to use all the three fans, so one for the parts cooling, one for the heater one, and the second one for the heater two, also uncomment all of those and make sure that you know exactly which one is going to be turned on. Now during the print, of course, the parts cooling fan is running the heater fan is running but also for the controller board that fan is also running as well it's very cool it's very nice it runs fine i did use prusa slicer with a little adjusted creality and the three profile i also made sure to add my ip address to send every single file that i slice directly over to my creality and the three with a big 3 tech monta board if you want to use a png file to send right over so that you have a nice thumbnail also that is very possible i just gave you a little screenshot what i changed so that you can also make the same change as well of course this board is an amazing addition to your Creality N3 N3 Pro or any other 3D printer that uses a stock Creality N3 board. Of course, you can also use this board on many other 3D printers as well. Maybe checking also the site of Big 3 Tech where you can use, not this board, but where you can use the Big 3 Tech Manta board. I will provide links in the description. Some can be affiliate links so that you can support this channel without you paying any extra money. Feel free to, to use one of those or maybe also if you find somewhere else this board, feel free to buy it there and have fun with installation. What do I like about this board? This board boosts your Creality N3 into 2023 or even longer. There are some great additions because you can run Clipper on this 3D printer and send prints remotely. It's fun. The downside of this board is this board is big. It's very big. It almost barely fits inside of the frame, but it is made for the Creality N3, so it will fit. But keep in mind that if you are going to use the micro SD card, because you know it runs Clipper via the micro SD card, you need to cut a little hole from the cover so that it will fit. And also one screw less for the cover to you know be attached to. If you made it this far in this video, you are amazing. If you didn't know that, now you know. Amazing thanks for these amazing Patreon and YouTube members supporting this channel. All names will be mentioned right in front of my face because they are amazing. They are a part of the Z3DP printing gang. You can also join this same gang by supporting this channel. You can do it financially, go and check out the Patreon link in the description or maybe check out the YouTube membership peers. If you don't want to spend any money at all to this channel, but still want to support this channel, hey, subscribe to the channel because almost 90% of the viewers are not subscribed. So where are you waiting for? And you can also like this video and share this video on other social medias. Hey, you are amazing. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Peace. Bye bye.